Hello, my name is Nick Allen. I'm here today to talk to you about the human factors of point of care infectious disease diagnostics. I'm a project manager at Starfish Medical and I also uh, head up the biotech team, uh, the biotech manager there. Uh, and my background is not uh, in engineering specifically, I'm actually a microbiologist by training. And, uh, and that's why I'm here today to talk to you specifically about infectious disease uh, point of care diagnostics. That's a, an area that's near and dear to me. Uh, in the biotech group, we do a number of different things. We do uh, we focus on assay method selection uh, and development of uh, specific assays, and, and specifically around uh, infectious disease diagnostics. Right now, but we do other other assays as well. We collaborate with the other folks uh, in the in the whole Starfish team, uh, working with mechanical engineers and the electronics engineers, working to integrate integrate the device design. Uh, particularly, you can imagine if you're handling a sample or designing a medical device to engage with human samples, uh, you, you want to do some testing of that in the proof of concept phase. And that's where the biotech team comes in. Uh, we end up putting um, uh, biological samples safely uh, into the devices or the devices into the biological samples. And we also do preclinical laboratory testing in support of some of the registration activities for the devices. Often we get a call from a new client saying, hey, I've got this great new uh, infectious disease diagnostic platform and it's going to be point of care. We said, that's great. What, what do you mean by point of care? And so uh, if you allow me, I'd like to go into uh, what our definition of point of care is and talk to it from a, from a fairly high level, um, from, from an academic perspective in terms of what, what point of care means, but then also too from practically what, what point of care actually means. So there's, a, there's an interesting uh, way of looking at point of care, and, it, and, it, and from an engineering perspective, what we look at is our target product profile. And what that means is if you're going to uh, make a product, what audience are you selling it to? And there's basically three elements that you have to consider. The first is the user, who's going to use the, use the device. Uh, the device itself, what is this thing going to actually be? In, the, in infectious disease diagnostics, is it going to be something like a dipstick or is it going to be part of a, a large integrated system at a central lab? And finally, the third element is what is the, uh, what is the purpose of the test? And so when you're uh, coming to me and you're saying that we're going to do point of care, we really have to consider the target product profile. When people think uh, point of care, the, the quintessential image is often the, uh, the dipstick in the savanna under a tree somewhere. You're doing a test and it's, it's being done right there. And, that, and that's fine, but uh, you can also consider uh, a test like um, something for HIV or malaria or dengue, and that's being done in a community setting. And so that's one element away from that. Uh, it's not under, under a tree in the savanna somewhere. There's, there's a, usually a building involved nurse practitioner or something we're doing doing some tests some some limited training there uh, point of care can also be uh, in a clinic lab there can be a little lab attached to the to the to the station there and we can do the same HIV test it can be a, a dipstick type thing or it can be more involved it can be actually pipetting some precise volumes where you wouldn't be able to do that under a tree you now have a pipette that you're able to work with some electricity perhaps a computer things you can work with there and that can work its way up into a peripheral lab there's labs where the, you're at the clinic and set a sample gets sent off to a peripheral lab to do. That's another uh, uh, point of care. Uh, and finally, uh, something that perhaps we may be all familiar with uh, here is if you have a, have a sore throat, uh, as I do today, and you, and you suspect it might be strep throat, so a bacterial infection, but you can't rule out if it's viral or otherwise, you go to the hospital, they do a little throat swab. That actually is a, is a, is a, is a dipstick. It could be done uh, right there at the nursing station or get sent to a central lab within the hospital. The results comes back typically within your visit, and that is point of care testing. But it certainly is far removed from, it's being used by a well-trained professional, and it's far removed from that quintessential scenario where you're out in the, in the savannah under, under a tree. And so uh, that's one of the challenges that we have when we're, we're talking to folks that, that want to develop point of care uh, technologies. And so there's a helpful slide that I'll put up here that talks about what point of care uh, means. And there's a nice definition up here for you. 
But essentially, there's three key elements to point of care, and that means that uh, the first element is is that we're going to have rapid clinically actionable results. So you think about that throat swab; it gets done within a, a fairly condensed time frame. You're still at the hospital, and you get the results. It changes the uh, the healthcare provider's decision. So the result comes back, and it says, "Hey, it's negative for for uh, strep uh, strep bacteria." It's probably a viral infection. And so that leads to the third element, which is the correct uh, treatment or management choice. So I don't go home with antibiotics uh, and, I, and I just get to gargle some, some salt water at the end of the day. And the key thing really for me in point of care uh, decision making is it happens on the spot in the same encounter. And so you can see that through, through the examples that I gave. And so again, we're, we're breaking down the title here. So we've talked about human factors. We're talking about uh, what, what point of care actually means. And the final element, is uh, in, in my mind is, is what is infectious disease and um, to me it's quite obvious but uh, in, in the context of this conversation I'll talk to you about infectious diseases and I, I'll offer you a slide here that lists the different uh, varieties of infectious diseases that we uh, that we can encounter or design our devices towards and these can range from everything from prions which actually some could argue is, is not uh, uh, a biological agent, but rather uh, um, it's an infectious protein, which is quite interesting because it's Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease uh, and Kuru and some other interesting things from viruses to rickettsia, bacteria, fungi, protozoan, um, and even arthropods uh, such as head lice and stabies. Um, and so those are all infectious diseases or vectors thereof. And that's when we're designing infectious disease diagnostic platforms, we're trying to detect uh, the presence of, of this cast of characters uh, and help the clinicians make informed decisions about treatment options uh, or the presence or absence of this condition. So uh, in conclusion, then I'd like to offer you with a take home message uh, and that is uh, if someday you're tasked with uh, developing a infectious disease point of care diagnostic platform, I'll offer you a, uh, a, a um, a nice mnemonic to, to take home and, and, to, and to think about when you're when you're doing that. And it's a, an acronym, and I can't take uh, credit for this, unfortunately. This was proposed originally by the World Health Organization, but I've added a B to it. And the B is important in my mind. It's so important that in the slide I'm, I'm showing here, there's a person in a spacesuit, and, and what are they doing in the spacesuit? Uh, for those of you that are familiar with the different classifications of biosafety, uh, they range from biosafety one, which is working at the bench with things like E. coli or, or yogurt organisms, to biosafety level two, which is what we operate our lab at. Uh, and you need to have some precautions. There's, um, you work in hoods, you have uh, gloves, lab equipment. Biosafety three, where you actually have to shower in and out and you worked in a controlled environment. All the way up to biosafety four, which is what I'm showing you here. This person is working at, um, I believe this is a picture from um, the US Army, uh, medical infectious disease uh, uh, group, uh, USAMRID, and this is a level four facility. And the infectious agents, something like Ebola, which this person is likely working with, are so uh, risky that the person is in a positive pressure spacesuit. Uh, and so why do I have this image up here? Not because we're gonna be developing infectious disease platforms for Ebola typically, However, it's, I want to drive home the message that when we do this work, we have to consider first and foremost that we're going to be detecting infectious diseases. And so all of the design considerations around it, think disposables, think plastics, think how the person is going to be using it. We have to consider that at the end of the day, you're going to have a biohazard on this, on this device. So uh, if you remember one thing today about this in, in designing, that would be the, the first message. The rest of these um, acronyms, the, the be assured, uh, is, kind of makes sense. And again, this is offered from the, the World Health Organization. Uh, the first thing they talk about, of course, is affordability. It needs to be sensitive. It needs to be specific to the agent that we're detecting. It needs to be user friendly. Again, one of the reasons why we're talking about this in the context of human factors and the target product profile, it has to be friendly to that user group. Uh, it has to be rapid and robust. So it has to have that, if we think about our definition for uh, point of care, we have to have that result within that same clinical uh, visit. And it has to be robust. If we're gonna be testing something that is gonna be in a blood sample, the assay can't be susceptible to, to blood being in that. Uh, ideally, it should be equipment free and it has to have a deliverable uh, result. And so that's a, a helpful acronym that I, that I hope uh, you can use in, in your development exercises. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for their time today. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments, there's uh, some contact information at the end of my presentation. Thanks very much.